NFL free agency starts next week and y'all have questions. I'm going to answer them now on this edition of the weekly Friday mailbag on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of the Lockdown Panthers podcast, a part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Your team every day. That's what we do here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Make sure to subscribe and watch the show over on YouTube. We finally got number 300 subscribers, so let's get over to 400 subscribers by the end of next week. Asking everyone to please do that, and thank you to everyone so far who has supported the show over on YouTube. And thank you to all the folks that listen on Apple Podcasts, where I ask you to rate, review, and subscribe. Five stars only, please. And also, you can follow us on Spotify, or wherever you listen to this show, and all your favorite shows across the Locked On Podcast Network. And be sure to follow me on Twitter, at Julian Council, where every single Friday, like today, I answer your weekly Friday mailbag questions. So let's go ahead and get into the weekly Friday mailbag on this edition of Locked On Panthers as Monday is the beginning of the legal tampering period in Carolina and across the NFL. So we'll see what moves the Panthers are able to make on Monday and throughout the week as the new league year starts on March 16th, next Wednesday. Let's go ahead and start off with, hmm, Jacob this week on the mailbag. He asked, I know you hate draft questions, but what if the Panthers trade back and draft a tackle and take Desmond Ritter in round three? He has a lot of upside and was impressive at the Combine. Willis will probably be gone by then, but Ritter appears to be a sleeper in this draft class. Love this channel and the Panthers. Hope you have a great day. Thank you, Jacob. Um, Sure. I think there obviously is an appetite from everything that we've heard and people we've talked to on the show uh, for the Carolina Panthers potentially trade back in the draft to try and get some of those day two picks in the second and third round, which they have none of because they traded the second round pick last year to bring in Sam Darnold, which was a bad decision. And they traded the third round pick to bring in CJ Henderson, which does not seem to be that great of a decision right now as he does not appear to be someone who's ready to take over as a starting corner in a National Football League heading into year three. So I would not be opposed to that, them draft trading back and then being able to get more picks and get and draft the tackle. If there's someone, it's a deep tackle class, apparently, to all the, according to all the draft analysts, and they could be able to maybe get a guard there as well and maybe another position of need. And as far as Desmond Ritter, I don't know. Whether he will fall to the third round, that seems like a little bit too far. I think you'd have to probably take him in the second round. He was really good at Cincinnati the last two seasons, especially this past year. And he is someone who, in the right organization with the right coaching over a period of time, could turn himself into a really good player in the NFL. And that's the same conversation that we're having with Malik Willis. Ritter might have more size, um, might not have the arm strength of Malik Willis, but we'll see with both those guys how it pans out. But I think I'd rather take. Ritter in the second round than taking Willis in the first round, especially at sixth overall. But again, Scott Bitter and the Panthers have already said that if they find a franchise changing player at six and that one is someone's there, they're going to take him opposed to drafting or trading back to draft later on in the first round or pick up a day two pick. They will find a way, I think, to find a day two pick. It might not be using that six round pick, though. Let's go to Sam now, who said, what is your opinion on a potential trade up with the Detroit Lions to secure one of the top two tackles? Would it be worth giving up a player like Robbie or CMC for more later round picks and play in a player like Swift or a defensive player? Um, no, I don't think the Panthers to be trading up at all. They don't have assets to begin with. So why would you be trading up more when you already sit in a position, according to Scott Fitterer, where you can take a franchise changing player? No reason for them to do that. I understand that. You would rather have Evan Neal or Ike Aquanu, who appear to be the top two tackles. And I've seen a lot of sentiment this week that after the combine, it looks like Ike Aquanu might be the consensus number one overall pick to go to Jacksonville. Evan Neal won't be available at six. So where does that leave the Carolina Panthers? Either with Charles Cross, Trevor Penning, who has a mentality that might fit here in Carolina, here with Matt Rule, that maybe he would be the sixth overall pick for the Carolina Panthers. As a 6'7", 330-pound left tackle, we'll see how it plays out. But trading up with Detroit, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, if you ask me if they want to trade up to 32 with Detroit, that might make a little bit more sense. 
then again, the Panthers don't have a lot of assets to be trying to give up in that situation. All right, have Nath, and this one came from YouTube. Again, guys, if you uh, are watching the show on YouTube now, you can send in your weekly Friday mailbag questions in the comment section to any of the videos. Nath asks, the one and only good move the Panthers have made under rule is trading for C.J. Henderson, in my opinion. And I would somewhat disagree with that so far. Early returns haven't been great. Uh, he says, I know he had some off-field so family struggles in Jacksonville and was considered retiring, giving up, giving how much it was getting to him. How has he settled in Carolina? Um, I don't think he played well last season. Like from everything that I've seen, and I just finished this question. He said, is he in a better headspace than he was in Jacksonville? Do you hold any high hopes for him moving forward? I was actually surprised he played as much as he did in 2021, given his struggles with depression. I think if he's back on track mentally, a full offseason will do him a world of good. We must remember he didn't have one last year. And yeah, sure, that would be great for him. I don't know what's gone on with CJ Henderson personally. And we can't overlook mental health and how important it is for players in the NFL, but not just them, everyone out there in our country and in the world. And that's something that's important to be sensitive to. But watching him on the field last year, it didn't lead you to believe the Panthers made a good decision by giving away Dan Arnold, who had a really good connection with Sam Darnold back during the preseason and you know, in the first couple of weeks where you would think, hey, when Christian McCaffrey went down, maybe having Dan Arnold would have helped out Sam Darnold to have some level of success in the offense last season. But as far as CJ Henderson goes, he wasn't great. He was a top 10 pick. It's great to have back-to-back -back years where you have a top 10 corner and JC Horn looked a lot better than Henderson in the two and a half games that he played for Carolina last year. But even getting later into the part of the season, as Henderson learned the offense, it didn't, or the defense rather, it didn't really, he didn't really show you a lot that would make you believe that he's going to turn out to be a top corner. He's going to turn out to be that number two guy that you can depend on across from J.C. Horn. So that's why the Panthers would really be um, better off if they're able to bring back Dante Jackson next season. All right, let's take a quick pause, and I will get to more of your weekly Friday mailbag questions here on this edition of Locked on Panthers. It's that time of the year again as college basketball's tournament is finally upon us. From all the latest odds, contests, and player props, BetOnline.net is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season, and it's not basketball. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Okay, let's get back into it here on this edition of the weekly Friday mailbag on Locked on Panthers. Heading over now to JRV, who's enjoying watching the show on YouTube, says he's got a two pack of questions for me. First, I'm reading where teams are interested in trading for Robbie Anderson. What is your take on shipping him out? And second, which meddling owner is worse, Jerry Jones, Dan Snyder, or David Tepper? I have to go with Dan Snyder, obviously. The team is terrible. The Washington Commanders, everything that they do just seems to be just awful. And let's not ignore the improprieties that have been reported on by the Washington Post and the investigation that the NFL did to go with the new organization there in Washington. Dan Snyder probably should not be an owner in the National Football League. So I'd have to obviously go with Dan Snyder and the Washington Commanders. As far as your question about Robbie Anderson, I answered this earlier on in the week. I'm pretty out on Robbie, honestly. He regressed last season. And he called out the fan base for not being true fans when he's never done anything here in Carolina. He only has had one season over a thousand yards receiving wise, maybe a better quarterback play. He can be much better in 2022. We saw what he did with Teddy Bridgewater. A lot of y'all hated Teddy Bridgewater, who was far and beyond way better than Sam Donald's ever been and ever will be in a national football league, even though he's a middling quarterback. But Robbie Anderson had a career year with him. Maybe they upgrade the quarterback talent next season. Then Robbie has a better year. But his attitude overall, is just kind of out on him at this point in time. I don't know what his value would be, but if they want to get rid of him, they can get something good for him, which I don't think they will, then sure, I'm on board with it. It just would leave the Panthers to try and figure out what they're going to do at the other wide receiver positions. Um, now moving on to Mr. C11. I see you are now on my train of just rolling this back with Darnold and trying to make it work since they invested heavily in him. Welcome aboard, brother. Okay, uh, let's soak in the misery together this season. I also think the C-Mac rumor is 100% being floated by the Panthers. Say you want a first and then end up with a second. Like I don't know if the Panthers are going to be able to get what they want 
um, in a trade for Christian McCaffrey. I also don't think they should be giving up on him right now. He's only going to be 26 when the year starts. It's been bad luck more than, I think, a symptom of he's actually injury prone, had never had injury issues in his career until the last couple of seasons. And I know a lot of you are going to bring up, maybe that's because he's played too much. Hell, if someone rolls up on your ankle that has nothing to do with you playing too many snaps and the quick turnaround led to the muzzle injury and only time Christian McCaffrey ever had an injury where he was working too hard to get himself back was towards the end of the 2020 season where I think he had the groin injury. Other than that, it's all just been bad luck in football. So we'll see how, how he does moving forward and if he can stay healthy for the Carolina Panthers. As far as rolling with Darnold, I'm not necessarily on board with that. Like, I just don't want the Carolina Panthers to dig even more of a hole than that they're already in. You've already seen all the top quarterbacks go off the board. We'll see what happens with Deshaun Watson as he goes before a grand jury in Texas this week. I don't feel great about that just based off of what I've been told and what I've read from all the legal experts that he's likely to be indicted at some point, either on Friday or in the days to come. If he isn't, then he still has the 22 civil cases that need to get sorted out. But that's a lot better than criminal cases. And it's still not a good situation. So we'll see how that plays out for the Carolina Panthers. Makes no sense to bring in Kirk Cousins and the $35 million cap hit. That, that's going to have on the Carolina Panthers. We went over on Thursday with Ellis Williams. They have $29 million in salary cap. Nine of that they want to use within the season. So we're down to 20. Then about eight of that they want to use when it comes to signing the rookie class. So now we're only at the $12 million. They can't fit in Kirk Cousins. Doesn't make a lot of sense to trade for Jimmy Garoppolo. His cap hit as well. They can't fit that in. Carson Wentz has already gone to the Washington Commanders. So where does that leave you? Do you want to sign Mitch Trubisky to a multi-year, eight-figure deal per season? I don't think so. If you wanted to do that, you should have done it last year where you wouldn't have to give up any assets at all. And we're not having the conversation about the Panthers not having a second-round pick and missing one of those fourth-round picks this season. But instead, we are because they decided to have make a, a take a gamble and take a chance on Sam, Gar on Sam Darnold. And that did not work out as we've seen. So, no, I'm not on board necessarily. I just don't think that they are going to make any decision at this point that's going to be positive outside of if they are able to trade back and then draft a quarterback. Taking Pickett or taking Willis at six would be overdrafting them, and it wouldn't make any sense. And I don't think it helps them in the immediate future. Riding out with Sam Darnold, who they invested in, who they have $18.858 million tied to this season, it might be the most sensible thing for the Panthers to do. But as we all know, the Panthers don't want to do that, and neither do the fan base. But it might be the best thing for everyone involved. Just eat it this season, see if it works out. And if it doesn't, you have a new head coach and a new quarterback in 2023. Moving on to Brody, which players in NFL history have been traded due to being injury prone but end up truly elite Hall of Famers, referring to the mistake of potentially trading Christian McCaffrey? Uh, off the top of my head, man, I can't really think of it. To be honest, I don't know. I, I If any of y'all know who are listening, please tweet at me and I'll pass it on to Brody. I, I don't know who that would be like. I mean, Thomas Davis, I guess you look at here in Carolina, had with three straight ACL tear injuries, and he was able to play late into his 30s and turn out to be a really good player. Is he going to be a Hall of Famer? I don't know. Possibly. I, I don't think he will be. Um, just I don't know. I don't have his numbers in front of me. I, I don't think he had a Hall of Fame career. I just I don't, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But that's an example of someone who had injuries more devastating than the McCaffrey's and came back and was able to be healthy and was able to be an impact player well into his mid thirties. So there's one example, at least here in Carolina. Um, I think Mimi was the name of this person. He had an interesting YouTube name uh, saying it's certainly noticeable that Tepper has not come out publicly to support rule. I'm noticing that more and more fitter and rule are seemingly further apart when speaking publicly about certain players. David Newton, who is not someone I normally follow, but posted a statement on Twitter that an NFL executive said that the situation with the Panthers is a bleep show. Do you feel that a disagreement in football philosophy between fitter and rule is becoming more apparent? Plus, the fans' complete loss of confidence in rule could be perhaps the reason Tepper hasn't publicly supported rule, and maybe he's still contemplating firing him. It would be weird for him to do it so close to the draft, OTAs, etc. Nonetheless, love your channel, content, insight, blessings. Thank you so much. Also, um, they said... P.S. Is this true that the construction on the new Panther facility in Rock Hill has halted? Yeah, it's true. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. Just glad I don't live down in York County because it's not my money. Um, it's not the first time that we've heard reports about dysfunction within the organization. You have an owner who is an active participant. 
You have a head coach who has too much power when he has no experience in the NFL, especially when it comes to making personnel decisions. And you have a general manager who probably comes over and realizes that this is ridiculous. I should be running the show. I've been doing this for 20 years, and I come from a winning organization where the owner has no idea what he's doing and kept Marty Herney for an extra season so he could teach him more things and then head coach who's in over his head when it comes to personnel matters. So that's concerning. Uh, do you fire Matt Rule now in March? No. That would make it look like even more of a bleep show than it may already be here in Carolina. That would be the worst possible thing to do. It's not a good situation. And that's funny because I was reading um, an article from The Athletic about the Charlotte Football Club and all the missteps that they've made so far and how apparently the head coach who had talked about the team, how the team was screwed, apparently I was taken out of context. But either way, he has frustrations about missing out on players and how things have been have gone on so far. He almost resigned before the season even started. So to hear that with the soccer club, just imagine the dysfunction that's going on within the organization with the football team that David Tepper owns here in Charlotte. That is deeply concerning right now moving on to michael he says hey julian question for you i know federer is going to talk to can before free agency and i don't understand trading more picks away from more mediocre quarterback play and a huge cap hit why not re-sign cam for cheap use the cap for o-line and as for backup quarterback cuts last trade darnold and replace him with either a second day quarterback in the draft via trade back or sign a season bet like colt mccoy or chase daniel he always said Cam was put in a bad situation last season. Given an off season, there's no way he's not he's worse than Darnold, right? Anyway, I just wanted your thoughts. Um, yeah, okay. So you can't cut Sam Darnold. If you cut him, that's still eighteen million dollars. That's going to because it's dead cap. It's still eighteen million dollars. You're gonna have to deal with. There's no way to cut Sam Darnold. So that's not a possibility. They made it very obvious to everyone who wanted to pay attention and was willing to listen in the final two season, final two weeks of the season when Sam Darnold started at New Orleans and at Tampa that they don't view Cam Newton as their starting quarterback. So I don't think they have much interest in bringing back Cam. They'll certainly have a conversation with him. They have had conversations with him. Cam also said he's not coming back to be a part of a 5-12. and 12 team. I don't think he's coming back to Carolina because he loves to be Sam Jones' backup in 2022. I don't think that they're earnestly going to give him an opportunity to be the starting quarterback next year just because of the money that they gave to Sam and the other assets they traded for Sam Darnold. So bringing back Cam, I don't think is a realistic option. I also don't think Cam wants to come back here and lose. If he can go to a team that's going to win for sure next season, then I think that's a situation that he'll want to put himself into. So yeah, you can't trade Darnold. You can't cut or trade Darnold unless you give up assets and you really want to do that. And then bringing in Colt McCoy or Chase Daniel to be the backup. I mean, okay, sure, I guess, but. Cam, bringing back Cam, I don't think that's going to happen. Cutting or trading Darnold seems like a non-starter unless you're giving up assets. So the other part of it, don't really think that's a realistic uh, possibility for the Carolina Panthers right now. All right, now we'll take another quick pause, and then I will answer more of your weekly Friday mailbag questions in just a moment. The month of March is rolling along, and it's this time of the year where most of us have pretty much given up on all our New Year's resolutions, but we're not going to do that this year. We're going to stick to our resolution of eating right, and thanks to Built Bar, it almost feels like we're not really having a resolution because we actually enjoy eating them. Have you all tried the Built Bar Puffs? If you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best-tasting bars. Puffs are the first-ever protein-infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, they're not just a protein bar, they're a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Matter of fact, all Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, Puffs included. That's right, 100% real chocolate in every single Built Bar. They're low calorie, high protein, replace your candy bars with these. They're better tasting and they're better for you. So go to Built.com and use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your first order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Okay, let's get into the rest of your questions here on this edition of the weekly Friday mailbag. Going to Tony, he uh, says, in a cruelest of irony, Teddy Bridgewater may not be the best veteran quarterback available, even though that redux will never happen again. Yeah, it, it's the irony of it, of it all is you didn't want Teddy Bridgewater anymore. And I'm talking really to David Tepper and Matt Rule threw him under the bus at every turn. And yet the quarterback that they brought in, and who they praised, who loved the ball, had a big arm, was going to work hard, is far worse than Teddy Bridgewater. 
And all the advanced analytics told you that he was a worse player than Teddy Bridgewater. But he got so caught up in the situation in New York and what wasn't around him and said, if he comes here to Carolina, we'll have a better situation with Joe Brady, with Matt Rule here, who had met Sam Darnold when he interviewed with the Jets job and with Christian McCaffrey and DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson, that things would be better. But unfortunately, McCaffrey was injured. Joe Brady shouldn't have the job. Robbie Anderson regressed and the offensive line was terrible. And Sam Darnold was bad. And it wasn't just all those things. Sam Darnold was just not a good player. So it's unfortunate the Panthers, who should have kept Teddy Bridgewater and drafted a quarterback last year and allowed that quarterback to sit back for a season, then Teddy, they could have cut this this right, they could have cut right here before free agency and then continue to build the roster around that rookie quarterback heading into his second year and the first year likely as a full-time starter. And then you would have control of the NFC South where Tampa doesn't have a quarterback, New Orleans doesn't have a quarterback, and Matt Ryan is on his last leg in Atlanta. Instead, you're still looking for another quarterback and there's not a lot of great options. And your best option probably is drafting one in the draft when this is not a strong quarterback draft. So they made a ton of mistakes, and one of them was moving on too fast and pretty Teddy Bridgewater. You could even say one of them was bringing Teddy Bridgewater in here in the first place. Uh, moving on to Scott, how much of the organization, how much of the organization mess can be contributed to David Tepper keeping Herney around when he was cleaning house? If you're going to clean house of the old regime, why keep the two-time GM? I think that was the first domino to fall that started the long run of bad decisions for the new era. I don't necessarily agree with that. Like the way David Tepper described it was that he wanted Marty Herney to be around because Marty had experience and he wanted to learn the inner workings of the National Football League through the eyes of one of his peers. And Marty Herney is around his age. And I think also David Tepper wanted someone around his age to be a drinking buddy and to, you know, kind of hold his hand through his, you know, first year with a new head coach who had come from college and also having a college coach. He wanted an experienced general manager. I believe from the beginning that he should have gotten rid of Marty Herney. He should have brought in a GM and brought in a new head coach. And if you want to bring in a college coach with Matt Rule, then you need to pair him with a general manager who had experience in this league. He did that with Marty Herney. The problem was Marty Herney was never going to be here for a long time. So he should have brought in Scott Fitterer or whoever with Matt Rule and then given that GM the power. Instead, it wasn't just keeping Marty Herney around that was the issue. The issue was knowing that Marty Herney was not long for Carolina was that Matt Rule was given the power. And Matt Rule having the power of the roster has led to two five-win seasons. That's the issue. Not Marty Herney being here, but giving Matt Rule the power from day one when you probably should have brought in another GM instead of having Herney around and having that GM have the power. So maybe I am still saying that the issue is Marty Herney, but really the issue is the decision to give Matt Rule the power when that should have never happened. So thank you, Scott, who also said he used to work in the athletic department at my alma mater of Elon and enjoys listening to the show on his morning drive. Thank you for making me a part of your daily routine, Scott. Um, Alex, are there any linebackers that the Panthers should target in free agency? Maybe Bobby, Bobby Wagner or Jordan Hicks. Um, really tough day in Seattle where Russell Wilson gets traded and they cut Bobby Wagner, who's going to be a Hall of Famer, by the way. Would love him to be here. I know last year I beat the drum on KJ Wright coming to Carolina. He eventually signed with the Las Vegas Raiders. And <laughs> there's another irony, coincidentally, the player the Panthers had traded away and Denzel Perryman was a pro bowler. And KJ Wright didn't even play that much last season. So maybe he would have been better off getting to Carolina. I don't know. Bobby Wagner, though, I don't think at his age, and his talent is going to want to come to Carolina and lose. Jordan Hicks, I like the idea of that. We'll see how that plays out. I would also throw out, um, oh, God, who just got cut recently? Who, oh, let me see. I got to look it up because I'm, I'm, who got cut? Adam Schefter, it's, it's a linebacker, and they got cut, and I'm playing, and I'm looking, it was... It was yesterday or on Thursday. Who got cut? There, no, no, no. Darius Leonard I did not get cut. I can't remember who it was. There was another player who got cut who would make a lot of sense for the Carolina Panthers. And I can't remember what team they play for. So this was a waste of our time as I'm trying to sit here. I'm looking through again. Who the hell got cut? It wasn't Bobby Wagner. Um, 
linebacker, NFL. This is so bad. You guys can fast forward ahead if you need to. Uh, boy, who was it? It was not Bobby Wagner. Who is it? Who is it? I can't figure it out. I can't find a person. I forgot their name. Whoever that was, that was the person I was going to say. All right. Um, hey, Julian, big fan of the show. What do you think about bringing back Taylor Heineke, not the commanders seem to be moving? They're not moving on from him. Um, we'll just go ahead and say that. Uh, they're not going to bring – they're not getting rid of uh, Heineke. Carson Wentz has never been healthy in his career, so why would they move off of Taylor Heineke, who Rivera had here in Charlotte, and then brought him to Washington, who started a playoff game for them, started most of the last season for them, and – Played really well. He's not a starting quarterback, but he's a high-level backup. And I think the Washington Commanders are going to want to keep him around. So I don't think that they're going to bring in Taylor Heineke because uh, I don't think Ron Rivera is going to let him go. Another Josh asked, uh, to my question, though, you reported on the Pats trade talks about Robbie Anderson. What would you assume his value is? Also, if we trade Robbie, we would uh, we'd almost be admitting to tanking because that would leave Terrace Marshall as our wide receiver, too, for a game or two. And then Shy Smith for the rest of the season. <laughs> so you're basically saying that Terrace Marshall wouldn't be healthy. Would you want to take a receiver in this draft if we do trade Robbie or just go for our building blocks and take a quarterback and wide receiver next season in the draft? There's always going to be wide receivers to take, especially in the latter parts of the draft. And Terrace Marshall had a first round grade. If he can be healthy, he can be a good player for the Carolina Panthers. The question is if he can be healthy. I like Shy Smith. Even Zilstra brought something to the table last year. We'll see what they do with Alex Erickson. They can find some receivers. There's always receivers out there to find. Um, but they trade Robbie Anderson, then yeah, you need to be in on a wide receiver in this draft. Will that guy come in and immediately have a significant contribution? We'll see. The tight end passing game should be stronger this year. You know, if uh, Ian Thomas can develop, and we'll see what Tommy Trimble can develop into. Also have to take into account if Christian McCaffrey comes back. They've already talked about putting him out in the slot. And McCaffrey's your number one receiving option when he's healthy. Him and DJ Moore. So you're pretty good. You don't really need to have a wide receiver to, to make big-time plays. But I, this, there is a saying that says that a team and offense is only as good as their third wide receiver. And the Panthers had Curtis Marshall a couple of years ago, Curtis Samuel, excuse me, a couple of years ago and were really good with him. But last year you saw what they were missing as Robbie regressed and Terrace never stepped up into that number three wide receiver position. Same thing with Shai Smith with his injuries and his youth. And then Zilstra and Erickson – being limited talent wise, even though they worked really hard for his team and helped them on special teams and other key situations, just not enough to elevate the offense, which all boiled down to the poor quarterback play and the atrocious offensive line play. All right. Final question this week, Cedric saying, good afternoon. Do you think we should still look for another wide receiver? And the same question, if Robbie is gone and how do you feel about our Tar Heels? Can they make a run? Go heels. Um, yeah. Like I just said before, I don't think it's a bad idea, even if Robbie comes back, to draft a wide receiver. There's so many that come out of college year in and year out. No, you don't need to draft one at six. Um, fourth round, we'll see if they can get a day two picks. I don't think that is the priority, but you can find another wide receiver and you can pair them. I don't think that's a bad idea at all, just knowing how eventually you need to be a pass-heavy attack. But under Matt Rule, they say they want to be a downhill rushing team which doesn't make a lot of sense because that's counter to what every other team in a National Football League is trying to do and all the teams that have all the great quarterbacks. Now, the Panthers don't have a great quarterback. but So the thing is, you don't have a great quarterback, yeah, you'll be able to run the football. But can that quarterback complement that running game? We'll see. As far as the Tar Heels, great win against Coach K on Saturday. I've watched this team all year. I, I have no idea what to expect from them. Um, so we'll see how it goes. And, now, of course, I'm recording this. Uh, you're going to be listening to this after the Virginia game. I don't even know if they beat Virginia. And I'm recording this on Thursday. I have no confidence that they're going to do that. I hope they do. But who knows what team's going to show up any night for the Tar Heels. But it'd be great to see them get on a run as this is the best time of the year for me as a college basketball fan. But that's going to wrap it up for this edition of the Weekly Friday Mailbag on Locked on Panthers. Again, I'm your host, as always, Julian Council. Make sure to watch and subscribe to the show on YouTube. Thanks to everyone who's done that and supported the show so far since we moved over to YouTube. Over 300 subscribers. Let's get to 400 by the end of the week. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Julian Council every Friday. Like today, answer your weekly Friday mailbag questions. So either at me or DM me at Julian Council. And rate, review, and subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts. And follow on Spotify and all the other places where you listen to this show and all your favorite shows across the Lockdown Podcast Network. In the meantime, enjoy your weekend. 
Be safe, and I will talk to y'all on Monday as the legal tampering period opens up in the NFL and we get closer to the new league year and the start of free agency. So keep pounding and take care. Bye-bye.